Our Mark Watts is live now in South Central Los Angeles with tonight's report. Hello, Mark. Hi, Jerry, Jane. I'm sitting outside a South Central LA home where I sort of lived for 24 hours exactly two weeks ago today, I felt, in order to properly tell this upcoming story of this 10-year-old boy whose life has been absolutely ruined by violence, I felt that I had to move in with the family and live with the boy. Before I show you exactly who he is, let me introduce you to the rest of the neighborhood. Welcome to 90th Street near Compton Avenue in South Central LA, perhaps the most diverse block of real estate in the inner city. I don't know, it's kind of weird. Two o'clock in the afternoon, it's a melting pot of blacks, whites, Latinos, and Asian Americans. Young and old live here. Pit bulls and other dogs often run wild. So do the chickens. At times, 90th Street takes on the look of a foot stomping block party. The old lady in the corner plays the music. It's usually BYOB. The popsicle man brings kids refreshments and police they're always invited. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? It's a neighborhood where the playful scream of children can be heard as often as the scream of sirens. Make no mistakes, this block is owned and operated by gangs. So, once a day, the streets are cleared of kids' play so two rival gangs can engage in senseless gunplay. 3 o'clock p.m. You can set your watch by it. You can set your watch by it. And, and more than fear is excitement. Why are you guys fighting each other? Uh, uh, we don't get along. Something going to go down today? No. And they just start shooting down the street. The bullets can go anywhere. They shoot them, we shoot them back. That's mm -hmm. all. I mean, you guys go right head to head, right in front of each yeah. other. 10 year old Ricky Allen has been dodging the bullets for much of his young life. He has a front row season ticket to the Daily War Games. Unfortunately, he has seen about all the live action he can handle. When I see a pile of people ganging up on one house, I scoot back. You ever run in the house or, or hit the floor? Yeah. Sometimes you got to hit the deck, huh? Yeah. 3.30. My 24-hour companionship with Ricky revealed a life of constant exposure to frightening brutality. Five years ago, someone tried to kill Ricky. The scar you see above his lip was caused when a broom handle was thrust through his jaw. He fell through a glass coffee table three years ago and crashed head-on into a telephone pole on a skateboard when he was eight. Physically, he's okay, but Ricky receives almost daily psychiatric treatment for a host of mental disorders and symptoms of post-traumatic stress syndrome. Symptoms such as depression, anger, and sleep disturbances. I wish all this stuff never happened to me. Ricky is the second oldest child. He and his family often talk about moving, but they're stuck. His mom is unemployed, his dad is in prison, and really, the only foundation he has to base his life upon is what he sees on the streets, 4 p.m. Get back over there. Get down here. Don't you see what they're doing? Dion, move. It's not often a photographer captures a gang shootout in progress. These pictures are dramatic. But for the kids living here, it's just a rerun of yesterday. It's funny because sometimes we're so used to it that when it's late, everybody's disappointed. I'm not scared. I see it every day. Well, body laying in the street for most of these kids uh, it doesn't phase them very much. It doesn't seem to, at least outwardly. All signs of stress, however, are not obvious. Some symptoms of shell shock show up while sleeping. One time I had a dream that me and my sister and my mom was going to the grocery store, and then they started shooting, they shot us all. 5 p.m. No one was injured in this shootout, and deputies eventually arrested the gunman. Scenes like this discourage Ricky from joining a gang. It was hard to believe he even thinks about being in one. He was friendly and always smiling, but Ricky's mother says his heavy dosage of medication today kept him calm and peaceful, disguising his real behavior. I fight other kids and sneak on with pencils. And why do you think you, you get in a lot of fights? 
Cause what I see over here. Give me the other bread, Ricky. Sit down, Devin. 7.30 p.m., dinner time. Because of the medication, Ricky is gaining weight. And if Ricky's mom has her choice, her son won't stay on medication much longer, which could be risky. When not sedated, he's very hyperactive, defiant, and destructive. 9 p.m. Surrounded by all these kids, I felt like a big brother, something Ricky and all his little brothers so desperately need. I was also kind of scared because the reminders of violence seem to keep knocking at the door. Gunshots outside could be heard above the TV noise. I know they heard them, but no one even mentioned anything about it. Maybe if, if I had or could do better for myself, then I could pick up and take them away from me. The lights get turned out at the Allen House at 9 o'clock. The day starts all over again for Ricky at 7 o'clock in the morning. The bus picks him up at 8, and he admits his nights are often interrupted by fears that someone is going to come get him. I might think about it, and I might get back, and I might get on the couch, because I get scared sometimes. I think they're coming in the house sometimes. Next morning, 8 a.m., this is the only place Ricky truly feels safe. But psychiatrists say, here at this special school for mentally ill children, they see even more effects of Ricky's war-torn childhood. It's hampered his learning abilities. And at 10, he is just now learning how to read. 1.30 p.m., school's almost out. Ricky doesn't pay attention or interact with the other students very well. He's more concerned about the lessons of survival back home. Streetwise, Ricky may be smarter than any of his classmates, but in real life, he's flunking out. Right now, he's at the point where they think hospitalization might be good for him. Medication doesn't seem to be working. And so it's like that's the last resort for him now. So instead of his condition getting better, it seems to be working. And the problems don't end there for Ricky Allen. As you can see behind me, the windows of his home boarded up, the same one I spent 24 hours in. I was informed tonight on the streets seven days ago an arsonist burned Ricky and his family out of this house. I understand on the streets that the family is now in hiding. It has moved somewhere in Long Beach. For some people and for some kids in this neighborhood, the problems just never seem to end. Coming up in part three of Shell Shock tomorrow, a story on where kids turn to for help. Where do Shell Shock children go for help? A fantastic hospital that does a remarkable job of rehabilitating Shell Shock children and returning them to the mainstream of society. That all coming up in part three tomorrow. Jerry, Jane. Mark, thanks. Uh, your decision to spend the night with that family was a very effective way to tell a very sad story. Ricky, uh, definitely shell shock. You know, literally growing up, fighting for his life.